I've been looking at the book of Acts and uh, I've got to Acts 24. And the interesting thing about this part of Acts is it goes into quite a lot of detail about Paul's uh, defences, his uh, trials, the way he appears before different characters and the way his case is considered. And in Acts 24, uh, he appears before Felix. And I'm just going to read a little bit from Acts 24, starting at the beginning, verse 1. Five days later, the high priest Ananias went down to Caesarea with some of the elders and a lawyer named Tertullus. And they brought their charges against Paul before the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullus presented his case before Felix. We've enjoyed a long period of peace under you. And your false sight has brought about reforms in this nation. Everywhere and in every way, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with profound gratitude. But in order not to weary you further, I would request that you be kind enough to hear us briefly. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect and even tried to desecrate the temple. So we seized him by examining him yourself, uh, by examining him yourself, you will be able to learn the truth about all these charges we are bringing against him. The Jews joined in the accusation, asserting that these things were true. And so I'm reading just first, uh, firstly, this part of the chapter, as Paul goes into his defence. But it's helpful for us that we are told what to tell us so the 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 um uh the 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 people who are speaking against him what what he said and how he put his case um for the prosecution and it's interesting too that we have this um very classic uh honoring of the person in authority um uh, trying to say all the right things, trying to be nice to him and trying to get him on their side. And they had to be very respectful. Um, those days, people's lives were often at stake uh, if they did all the wrong things. So uh, there was a good reason to be showing respect and to be very careful in how you worded things. And people had power. Uh, people had enormous amounts of power uh, over other people's lives as well. So um, I just wanted to just point out in verse five, um, Tertullus puts this case and one of the things he calls Paul is a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world, being the ringleader of the Nazarene sect uh, and then falsely accused of desecrating the temple as well. Um, so Paul is seen as somebody who's a central figure. And in the words of Tertullus, who's prosecuting, who's, who's against him, who's uh, very antagonistic towards him, who's putting the case of those who really want Paul to uh, suffer for these things, he is seeing Paul as someone who's not just a troublemaker, not just somebody who's doing things and causing problems, but... Um, having an influence across the Jewish world, um, uh, uh, stirring up trouble right across the the, the, the Jewish diaspora, all the Jewish uh, communities uh, around the Mediterranean, and being a ringleader, being a key central figure for the Nazarene sect, for for the way, for the for the people who followed Jesus as the Messiah, and. I think what I'd like to just mention here really is it's important for us to understand that sometimes key church leaders, key figures, key people who God is using in an amazing way, um, people who often maybe they're in the public realm, maybe they have a, a platform in some way, maybe they just have a gift of leadership and they, they, they call things as they are and they, they speak out with boldness. Some of those people are likely to come under the most severe testing and, and challenging. Sometimes they're the ones who are going to have to be uh, really putting their case 
in the public realm and you, they, they will not necessarily be well received for doing so. And so I think it's important at this point just to pray for uh, church leaders, maybe in some countries too, we, we know that many pastors and leaders suffer greatly, often those who are seen as figureheads, those who are seen as influential towards others, uh, and they're often the ones that are targeted uh, when persecution comes to a, a church community, uh, and often they need to be the ones to speaking up with courage. Um, I was thinking just recently uh, uh, quite a lot about um, uh, a famous uh, theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German Christian, who was a real leader uh, to many and an incredible example to many as well. And, and he spoke and wrote with great courage, uh, and yet it cost him uh, a great deal as well. But he had the boldness and uh, the wisdom and to some extent the leadership capabilities to, to stand and speak on behalf of Christians and say, no, this is not right. Uh, we need to stand up to what is evil. And sadly, many leaders at that time, many church leaders, uh, didn't do that. Uh, they were frightened. In actual fact, they uh, compromised in various ways. But uh, Bonifer was one of those who stood up with great courage and fearlessness. So I want to pray, Lord, for those who are leaders and who have courage to speak and those that you've put in those positions to speak. And sometimes they have a message that isn't comfortable, that others are not easily able to receive, uh, but they need to speak uh, in truth and in wisdom. And they can be singled out. They can be identified as, as seen as troublemakers. They can be seen as ringleaders. They can be seen as people who uh, stir up problems. Um, and uh, actually those who oppose them often recognise their influence as well. So I want to pray that you'd encourage them, particularly those uh, those pastors and, and leaders who are influential in the church, in places where the church is persecuted and where people are suffering greatly. And it's not easy to be a leader in those places. It's not easy to be the person uh, who stands up on behalf, on behalf of others. So I pray, Lord, for those uh, who need courage right now, even today, um, that you would give them wisdom. Uh, you give them words to say when they're faced with uh, court cases, when they're faced with persecution, when they're faced with unfair and unjust systems. And I pray, Father, that they would be strong and remain strong and be great examples to those around them as well. Many blessings, and I hope that's helpful.